It's 2022, and if you don't have a stealth jet, you're not cool. Meet the Iranian F-313 stealth fighter jet that will go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the very best Russian, European, and perhaps even American fighter jets. Iran has always wanted to join the big boys club in a military sense after the revolution in 1979 and its result in the Iran-Iraq war afterwards. But recent years marked the expansion of the Iranian military power, or to better say, its potential. Let's see how the war in Ukraine, drones and Top Gun are all connected to the Iranian stealth fighter project. In 2017, Iran revealed a new variant of the Kahur 313. With Kahur standing for Conqueror, this aircraft, although obviously similar in design to the original, actually looks like something that might be airworthy at some point, perhaps even soon. So let's jump into its unusual design now. The elephant in the room are its wings. They have anhedral tips, which is very similar to what Boeing did on its bird of prey experimental aircraft in the 90s. The anhedral design is sometimes used for fighters to induce more roll instability, which is great for maneuvering fast and also used in cargo aircraft to give more maneuverability in flight to be able to fly hard and fast in combat zones. On the other hand, dihedral design gives more stability in flight and that's why it is used mostly on modern airliners, like the planes that you and I fly on today. When you look at the F313, it actually has anhedral designs with bent down wingtips, which is very weird and uncommon, just like with that Boeing concept plane. The idea behind this design choice, as far as what we know, is that it will give the plane a high level of stability and no need for fly-by-wire controls. Fly-by-wire, of course, is where you use computers to process the flight control inputs made by the pilot and then send the corresponding electrical signals to the flight control surface articulators. That's exactly what the Iranians are claiming that this jet is capable of. But this doesn't make any sense. Why would a modern jet fighter need to have manual controls and not use any computer systems to fly the plane? I'm not sure why that would be an advantage, and I'd love to know down in the comments what you think. And to this day, there has yet to be a test flight. Another interesting design choice behind this jet is the so-called European canard plus delta wing design, something that is also present with the Chinese J-20 and one of the options for the Korean KFX program. The F313 is allegedly powered by two GE J85 engines, or a reversed engineered variant, which are widely spread in the Iranian Air Force due to the use of the F5s throughout their years. So they're using an out-of-date engine from an aircraft made in the 70s. Nice. Although old and not that powerful, this engine could probably actually power this thing because the F-313 is actually a rather small aircraft, just like the F-5. So far, these are the positives that have actually pointed out that this project might be feasible. But let's see what's on the other side of the medal. This Iran jet looks wild and might be totally out of this world, but we won't know until it's flying or until it might appear in today's video sponsor, War Thunder. Now, don't fast forward on that timeline right away because I'm inviting you to come and play with me and fly some of these crazy aircraft that are in War Thunder, a free online military vehicle combat game. War Thunder features over 2,000 different land, sea and air machines that you can fly, drive and cruise to challenge yourself to be better than the aces of the past. Their range lasts from 1920s to the Cold War with tanks, boats, ships and of course so many aircraft. It's really crazy that they have everything from biplanes to fighter jets and even helicopters that you can unlock. My favourite so far being the P-400. And there are many more updates every few months with more content, just like one that featured the F-14 Tomcat that ironically Iran actually still flies today. 
You can play solo missions, or my favourite, in huge air battles with over a hundred different maps. That's right, huge battles that we can all play together. We played last month and it was the most chaos I've ever seen in a match. I'm still very much a beginner at the game, so you have a great chance to save me from other players, or if you really want, you can shoot me down, like everybody else did last time. The game is free to play across all platforms, PC, PlayStation and Xbox, and you can cross play with anybody on any device, and you don't need anything, just a keyboard and a mouse with the basic PC will run it. So no excuse not to make an account with my link down below and get the free bonus premium tank, aircraft and ship, as well as a boost to your account, and then come and play with me this weekend. It's going to be an absolute blast that I know. To join me, simply add found explained to your friend list in the game and then play with me this weekend. Okay, back to the show. Again, I'd like to point out that we're talking about the 2017 version here because the first one was something bought at Toys R Us. The first issue is its crazy design. Iran has never made a serious jet of this caliber. There is the HESA Sakui, but that's pretty much a reverse engineered and modified F5, and building a separate 5th gen jet from scratch is quite doubtful. Whilst the size does work with the engines that have been chosen, because it's such a very small aircraft, it doesn't look like that it would have much of an internal weapons bay. Its capacity would be around the 900 kilos weighted mark, which would only have the capacity for two bombs or four missiles. Which, by the way, the Iranians are promoting it as a light fighter or stealth interceptor, so let's give them the benefit of the doubt here. The nose of the aircraft also looks extremely small, and it's questionable what kind of radar it could actually fit. Let me remind you, for example, that the Russian two-seat version of the MiG-29, the UB-1, doesn't have a radar at all due to limited space. And what's with that FLIR turret on the bottom? A truly stealth design would have an integrated targeting pod or a thermal cameras in the hull not a ball sticking out of the fuselage. We also have to make a criticism of the intakes. First of all, they're rather small, so not much air is actually going to make it to the engine, and the position, having them on top of the plane, means it's a straight line to the compressor blades. Again, not very stealthy choice for a stealth aircraft. Basically, no S-shaped intakes, which is a standard for all stealth craft built today. Hey, the fact that this program director is not yet been taken out by Mossad is probably saying enough because the Israelis don't seem much concerned by this jet, and perhaps that's a lesson we should learn as well. So having stated the pros and cons, let's try and sum up this entire story. What we know is that Iran, despite sanctions and very limited technology at their hand, has managed to keep their fleet of F-14s and F-5s operational to this day. Even do some crazy modifications like having F-14s carry Russian missiles, like you can see here, so they're definitely very ingenious and crafty. There is also the Iranian drone program, which is definitely a big mention. They have been putting a lot of money and brains into developing drones in recent years, and thanks to a donation of a downed RQ-170 American Sentinel drone, in almost perfect condition, they have had a absolute boon to their research. And this is where the Ukrainian war comes into this. You see, the Russians have failed miserably in their own drone program and the aspect in warfare, and they don't have enough materials or science to counter the rise of Turkish drones. Their attack drones are mostly in development and they have seen very limited use, and there are lots of rumors that they have brought a large number of Iranian drones to quickly fill in this gap. This is big because what Russians definitely have is a lot of experience and technology for jet aircraft, from engines to building materials, and this could be the technological swap that Iran needs to bring this new stealth fighter to fruition. The Russians stepping into the F-313 development, or basically any Iranian fighter program, might be a key to actually getting this thing into the air. But that's just an assumption, but let's see how it ages and have I proved right down the line. 
The Iranians are definitely far behind in major military powers in terms of technology, but they prove to be really crafty time and time again. So let's see if something interesting happens in the future, and I wouldn't count them out yet. Thank you so much for watching and please join this discussion on this topic and let's see the competition on the best joke about that first mock-up. Until next time when I find something and explain it.